Hi again, live from the Android Developer Summit Sandbox. You are tuning into the Hashtag Ask Android live stream, and we'd like to welcome Yeet Bayar and Jisha Abubakar to the next and final session of the Ask Android live stream. Oh, final session. I All right, know. but this is a good one. Uh, so <laughs> Yeet is the lead on architecture components. Uh, he would also like you to know that he has a very cute dog named Frida. Mm -hmm. um, Jisha <laughs> is the architecture components product manager. She, alas, has no cute dog but she does have a very cute child. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, all right, anyways, uh, regardless of dogs and children, uh, what both of them have is a lot of architecture components knowledge. So if you'd like to ask a question during this final segment, go ahead and use the Ask Android hashtag, uh, and we're watching them all on the live stream now. All right, Dan, want to get started? Yeah, so Ihuan underscore ID asks, um, is view binding much better than data binding? <laughs> from, the, from, 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 from the here's the author of data binding. Uh, what do you think? Uh, so they're, they're different things. So you can so view binding like provides you a compile time safety when you talk to your layouts, mm -hmm. and it's super nice. You should definitely use it. Mm -hmm. So there's no point in doing why find view by ID. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, data binding does have the same functionalities, plus allows you to declare your UIs of what data you want to show. Mm -hmm. Now, you may or may not want to use it, depending on your application architecture. And also, view binding is like, very cheap to do. It's like, it doesn't slow down your compilation versus data binding because it analyzes your code, mm -hmm. it takes more time. So you get some more benefits from data binding and pay a bigger cost versus you get less benefits from view binding and pay less cost. So they have different things. Yeah, and I mean, you know, who cares about build speed anyways, right? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, <laughs> no, it's important. It's not like no, data mining no. is so, like some code you write, if yeah. we are writing it for you, of yeah. course. Yeah. I, 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 I use data binding a lot. I really enjoy yeah. it. So I, I uh, um, all right. Are there use cases where you would use both of them, or mm. is so, it really one uh, or the other? Data binding is a superset of view binding. Mm -hmm. So if you're using data binding, you don't have to use view binding. Actually, they use the same infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is no point in. I mean, actually, think about it. <laughs> you may want to use them together. So, like, let's say if you if you have a layout file where you like you want to access the views, whatnot, but you don't mm -hmm. really want to set any variables, then you may use view binding instead of data binding, mm -hmm. just per that layout in your project. This will also help us avoid generating one more class that does the binding because there's no binding. Mm -hmm. So yes, you can use so, them together. Yeah, but definitely it's a, it's a per layout thing at the very least. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so next question. Uh, can we have something like start fragment for result for the navigation controller? Uh, that is uh, SBO uh, 3000. Yeah, um, so for the navigation library, what we've been really trying to do is like just abstract away from activities, fragments, or like if you're using custom destinations. Mm -hmm. so, in this case, I would say yes, the team's really like working on this from just trying to understand like how can we kind of abstract away from all these like different callbacks that you have right now, like the start activity for results, start fragment for result, and like there'll be a navigate to result. So uh, how can they kind of clean that up and provide like a much cleaner API? So it's Stay tuned, I was, is what I would say. Team's on it. We appreciate your patience. Yeah. <laughs> and there's definitely some upvoted uh, feature requests, I would say, yeah. like, exactly. uh, related to that. And, so, yeah. um, and I know that Team's you really and Ian it, yeah. really pay attention really to those. Really yeah. We it. don't promise feature, but we are working on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got a bunch of comments around what's up with paging 3.0. What's up with paging, Jisha? Yeah, I know. Well, what's up with paging? Um, well, uh, we uh, I think he touched on this at the last I/O, and um, you know we talked about how we are planning to like rework the paging API. Kind of you know we've taken a lot of the developer feedback around like, well, what is, how does this work when I have like network and a database use case, and like how do I kind of propagate all my errors up correctly? And so those are really like all the problems we're trying to solve with the paging 3.0 plan. And we do, uh, you know, like it's again out in the open in terms of mm. commits. So if you're really interested, check out AOSP. I think that's a great place to see what the progress is. But the plan is like, how can we leverage like, you know, Kotlin core routines, provide like a simplified interface, provide a lot of this error handling and so forth out of the box. So yeah, uh, stay tuned again. I <laughs> <laughs> <All> promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. uh, come back to the next Ask Android uh, to be asking questions about you know, oh. some of these things. Okay. All right, cool. So um, Streets of Boston asks uh, from Twitter, uh, it's more of a feature request, but I'm also kind of curious about this. So live feature request, a room-like API for content resolvers removing the need for explicitly handling cursors and content values. Have you heard that request before? Is it already <laughs> done and I don't know it? <laughs> Do you want to talk to that? <laughs> it's like, uh, actually, yes. Yeah, so Samir is looking into this problem uh, 
right now. We actually we, we did a UX search to understand like what are the patterns where we can improve, especially related to scope storage as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to make it easier if if they have like if they know what they really want. A feature request will be really nice, mm -hmm. and then we can connect them with Samir and uh, talk more about it. But we know that can be improvements here, but. There's nothing yet. So you're mentioning a feature request, and we've said that a couple more times. What? How? How does one who has never made a feature request make a feature request? Like what? So are you <laughs> go to issue tracker that Google. Com? Yeah, I think is the it? easiest way might be uh -huh. if you go to d.android.com/jetpack/community. Mm -hmm. There are instructions there on how you can kind of file an issue for the architecture yeah, company. And I think so. you can store other issues. Yes. And the team really pays attention to yes. that, as we've been saying. A lot before. of attention. Actually, yeah, we use those stars for prioritization. Yeah. So Arif asks, um, how do we solve like the, the multiple time live data observer notify issue? <laughs> <laughs> These questions are so hot, can we? <laughs> <laughs> if you keep asking hard questions, maybe he will cry again. <laughs> uh, so there is, what I see most of, like this is a problem, you understand that it's not very easy, but what people, the mistake people usually make is mm. you think something is an event. Mm. But it, most of the time, if you can structure it as a state, mm. then things get easier. Yeah. So all this like data-driven architecture, you want to have your UI represent what the state is. Mm -hmm. uh, so this usually happens where vModel wants to do something, how do I do it? Mm. So I dispatch a single live event, just like, yeah. don't use it. Uh, <laughs> the, the problem there is your view model doesn't have a view. Mm -hmm. You don't even know if the view is there. Like you cannot, you're not able to do those. All you can do is you can change your stage, state. Like you know, maybe your state is my signup is complete, mm -hmm. and then your UI can take care of moving you to the other screen mm -hmm. when they they respond and when it comes back. There's also like a something. So we with with actually introduction of Kotlin channels and their fan art behavior, mm -hmm. uh, there's a way to implement this much nicer using the common pattern, mm -hmm. where you can like enqueue these requests and you can have your UI consume these. Mm -hmm. uh, so this this what I recommend people to look at. Mm -hmm. If they're finding in themselves in a situation where like something needs to be handled and then needs to happen by the UI, mm -hmm. you can, they can try to use this common pattern to handle this communication in a well described way. Now, do you think do you see something in navigation that would actually help that would help users have to you know eliminate the need for kind of a live event? Is that is that something we're thinking about or? Uh, there's some there's some explorations in that area because navigation kind of has a state where we could expose a part mm -hmm. of this, uh, but nothing concrete yet. It's not it's not very trivial because mm -hmm. uh, I mean navigation works in the historical world of Android. Yeah. So it's not always very trivial to abstract these things. Great. All right, so Jan asks for the YouTube live stream, uh, how do you ensure proper use of live data from view models? Are you supposed to have a private mutable uh, live data and expose a different field as a live data? Uh, live data map and live data, so and how does this apply to map and switch map? Uh, you can't. Sorry, should I say that? A yeah, bit I didn't slower? get the question. Okay, so I think it's basically uh, they're asking whether you should, uh, whether is it okay to expose immutable live data um, from your view model, from your view model, or you should should you keep that private and expose a uh, yeah. live data I mean, field? Uh, it's better not to expose immutable live data. Okay. Basically, in that case, like. If you are exposing a mutual live data, that means you expect them to edit it. Yeah. But it's your data, like you don't you don't have public variables everywhere, right? You usually have private variables. It's the mm. same mentality. Yeah. So if you don't want them to edit it, don't expose it as mutable. Yeah. 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 And we, like um, in, in a lot of the samples, I think we show that in our view models, yeah. uh, properly encapsulating it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you can take a look at those. Um, they, they were asking uh, for the map and switch map cases. In both of those cases, I believe just a live data is exposed anyways. There's not yes, a mutable live exactly. data exposed. So uh, that hopefully solves the situation for you. <laughs> All right. Um, from from Twitter also, Chow asks, should I use Flow instead of live data on Room when I want to reflect up to date data to other layers that can change any time? Do you want to make a call on that, dude? Hi, live data author. Uh, yeah. We, love, we, yeah. we, we love Flow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think for so in this context, I think with like Room and the, the Flow use case, I, I think like Danny had a talk on this yesterday, which I mm. I definitely do think like yes, you know, there is a path like 
leverage a lot of what you're trying to do there with flows. Mm -hmm. But to like, is there a live data and a, is there a world where you're kind of using the live data with the flows combined? So What's we, your take on that? I mean, from the perspective of flow, yeah. uh, if you already made the transition to coroutines and flow, I think mm -hmm. it just all makes sense to use flow. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest difference here is with the, with the structured concurrency and all the lifecycle mm -hmm. scope mm -hmm. things we have added in at mm -hmm. 2.2 of life lifecycles, mm -hmm. It's actually very easy to consume a flow in a life cycle constraint way as well. So these are coming very hot, like it's just yeah. only RC right now. Yeah. Uh, so it may take some time stable, but uh, it's completely fine to return a flow from room. Mm. Probably I will do that, still do that. Uh, from your view, like you can convert the flow to a live data. Yeah. You can still do that in your view model, so your UI code doesn't have much asynchronous stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it all makes I, sense. I really like that pattern. I, I like the pattern of having of not having live data coming from room and having live data just coming from view model. In general, I feel yeah. like that's a nice no, way. I, Sorry I about that. Nice. In general, it's a nice <laughs> day of way of doing that. Transition period. Yeah. yeah. These libraries are new. Like out of flow is preview and experimental. Mm -hmm. Before we can fully recommend something, we need them to be stabilized. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. All right. So. Um, Going back to navigation, uh, Tia Law asks, um, when is on-demand dynamic feature support for navigation component coming? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Minus. Yeah. 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 This was asked uh, a yeah. few days ago. Um, so. but I think it's uh, important to also, I think, understand from the, the dynamic feature module and you know, be it navigation support, what we're really trying to like also address is how, how do we handle that kind of installation of that module even on the, that happens on demand? How do we make sure your app behaves as expected when you navigate to it, even if that module doesn't get installed or you know, it fails? At the same point, you know, we have like tools like navigation editor and like how do we make sure all that is like a good seamless experience? Yeah. I think um, so Ben and Wojtek from Android Devrel, they have been doing a lot of work in this space and I think they did share like a sneak peek into like where they are and uh, possibly a way for you to kind of provide feedback on it. I think it was like 9.30 this morning PST. Yeah. But um, yeah, I highly encourage checking out that talk and I think that's, if you're interested in giving feedback there, be all yours for it. I think it's one of the cool things about the navigation component is, is that we actually wrote the navigator in a very generic way. So we yeah. simply had to write a navigator that supported this, this particular kind of flow and it just kind of works, which is, which is, which is cool. Is there any plans to support a trigger in Room um, uh, by marking a method in a DAO as a trigger? And this is from um, Alhuthi1. <laughs> uh, so I, I think there's two, two ways there. You can add triggers in Room. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't, you cannot do it through DAO, but you can like add a create callback and right. add your triggers. But if, if, I'm not fully sure what they're asking here, but if they're asking for the functionality where when a trigger happens in the database, can mm -hmm. I call this Kotlin function? Yeah. Unfortunately, the answer is no, because so SQLite has this API where you can normally call a C function, but mm -hmm. it's not exposed in the framework. Right. So we have no way of doing that connection. Plus, even if we did, that would be kind of expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now, they cannot get a callback to their Java function. So mm -hmm. their trigger needs to be scoped as a SQLite trigger, mm -hmm. unfortunately. All right. All right, so we actually started talking about this a little in the last segment, um, but we were wondering uh, what can developers expect to see uh, when uh, basically like Dagger and architecture components? What is your uh, work here? Uh -huh. um, what is the Jetpack Dagger initiative? We've okay. seen a lot of questions on the live stream about just Dagger in general, and I know that you guys are doing some work around that. Yeah, so we have been, uh, for the last couple of months, we've been working closely with the Dagger team to understand, like we, we know there's demand, we know there's a problem, like developers are struggling with this. Mm -hmm. We're trying to figure out how can we help. And uh, we, we did a user experience research on how people use Dagger or like other dependency ejection libraries to find where it can be helpful. And uh, we, we have a plan, we are working with the Dagger team to still use Dagger, but provide a much more opinionated structure around it so you don't need to learn. <laughs> Like, like the theory of dependency ejection and like yeah. all the curves to start using it. So we're trying to basically uh, decrease that entry barrier. Mm -hmm. So it's much easier to start. And also it's trying to provide first class stuff, uh, support for everything we have. So if you're like a work manager, it just works. You don't need to, you know, overwrite this callback here and then configure this thing on time. So we're trying to get to a state where you start using this new Jetpack DI, whatever we call it, yeah. and everything is, taught for you for the most common case. Mm -hmm. 
And as you scale, you can start using Dagger because we know it scales very well from Google. Yeah, and I think I just want to add on is like, yeah, as you mentioned, when we did the user experience research, one area that I felt we heard a lot was like, you know, error handling and like, how do we make sure you're not spending a couple of days trying to figure out a dagger error? <laughs> so um, that's something, you know, we're definitely eyes on as well is like, how do we improve just like, you know, you spend a lot of time with the setup, which we really want to simplify. At the same point, it's like debugging and like, just making sure you're able to manage Dagger within your app is also another area we're looking at. We're also trying to improve the Kotlin support. Actually, uh, Dennis Santiago from our team, he, he has been doing a lot of Kotlin improvements so that Dagger understands the Kotlin code mm -hmm. and like just works better. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Excited about that. OK, so uh, last, last question. How best should uh, I keep up to date with what's going on with architecture components? <laughs> I asked my PM. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 actually, I, I need to know this so question much. too. So. This so I, I say we have a great Android DevRel team. <laughs> um, I would highly recommend. I, th I think what we've done lately with like the you know like the Udacity courses with like the you know building your apps with uh, Kotlin. Mm -hmm. Like we've been really focused on making sure we ha you have like great code labs which are like hands-on mm -hmm. tutorial experiences and. At the same point, I mean, we, yeah, like, you know, stay tuned to like Android developers is what I would say. And, you know, yeah. um, Def definitely watch Android Dev at Medium. I would say we, yes. we put out a lot of posts there early, um, and so that, that's helpful. Uh, any, any comments for you on this one? Or, uh, <laughs> watch no, Reed's talks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so I, I have one actually. So on uh, DAC, actually, there is a page that gets into the nitty gritty. Whenever there's a release, it gives mm -hmm. the release notes for mm -hmm. all of the different architecture uh, component libraries. So depending on how deep of a dive that you want to get in, you can see when libraries get updated, when they move uh, between alpha, stable, you know, beta uh, phases. Also, so yeah. Sorry, the, uh, don't, don't forget, like we're developing all of this in the open. Everything yeah, is yeah. on Android X. Like you can see every single CL or all the conversations we have there. So if you are interested in, like, join us. We some people send pull requests. We become very happy when we see them. So it depends how much you want to be involved. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you could be making the updates. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like yeah. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much. Um, those are unfortunately all the time that we have for questions today. Uh, so again, thank you very much, Jisha, for joining us for these last 20 minutes. Um, and uh, thank you also so much for joining on the Ask Android live stream. Yeah, well, again, this concludes our last hashtag Ask Android segment uh, during this Android Dev Summit live stream. So thank you, everyone, who's been watching in the live stream and asking us questions on Twitter and on the YouTube chat. Please leave us a comment and let us know which segment you like best, and we're hoping we can do this again. Yeah, as you can see, we love your feedback, whether it's on architecture components or even the type of material that we're producing. Um, so we hope that you enjoy the rest of Android Dev Summit 2019. Uh, again, if you like what you see, uh, give us some feedback. Don't forget to subscribe to the Android Developers YouTube channel. And until next time, happy coding.